Okay, so the first question is from Masai Kage 11. He said, one thing I've realized recently is I get so anxious over everything and don't even trust myself when it comes to answering things. For some reason, I always feel like I'm wrong. This year, I haven't really answered questions in class, even when I knew the answer, because I kept second guessing my answer and thought I was wrong, if that makes sense. LOL. Masai Kage. I relate to that. I relate to that very, <laughs> very much. Okay, in school, I was a very intelligent kid. And I'm not saying that to brag, but, you know, I always had really good grades. And yet, I never answered questions. I would never raise my hand and answer a question. Okay, the only way I would answer a question is either if I was 100% sure that I was correct, like 100%, or if somebody before me raised their hand and got it wrong. Now, truth be told, nobody cares. Like nobody actually, you know, is thinking about if you get the answer wrong or not. Nobody's gonna think that you're stupid for getting the answer wrong. In fact, they'll probably commend you for having the courage, you know, internally, because a lot of people probably have that same fear. Or maybe it's just me and you, I don't know. Maybe that's not as common as I think it is. But I feel like, you know, you shouldn't really be in that mindset. Even though I myself was in that space, I think that you have to be okay with getting the answer wrong. Even if you know the answer is right, you have to be okay with failure. You know, that's a good practice for failure. Because if you're afraid of failure, you're going to miss out on a lot of things in life. And I know it sounds like I'm going very deep with this, but it's the truth. You know, that's just from my experience, what I've realized is that if you are afraid of failure and you're afraid of what other people think about you, you are going to live a much less exciting life. You know, you have the potential to do great things, but the only way to greatness is through failure. The only way to success is through failure. I think there's a quote by Thomas Edison, if I'm not mistaken, and I might be wrong. Who knows? I might be wrong on that, but I don't care. I'm still going to say the quote anyways, case in point. But I think it went something along the lines of, I've never failed I just found 10,000 ways that didn't work or something like that, something to that effect. And that's a quote that I think everyone should live by. If you're afraid of failure, you'll never find success. As a matter of fact, I wouldn't even say failure. I'd say defeat. Failure is a mindset. Failure is when you quit trying. Defeat is when you lose. You know, you lose temporarily, but you bounce back and you keep trying until you succeed. And like I said, I know it seems like I'm going completely off course here, but I promise you, this is more than likely the underlying reason why you have that anxiety, because that's the same reason I had that anxiety, an irrational fear of failure. You can't avoid failure in life. There's no way you can avoid failure. So my personal challenge to you is, I want you to raise your hand in class and answer a question every day for the next week. I don't care if you get it right or wrong, but you are going to build more courage in doing that. And on top of that, if you get it wrong, you're going to enable other people. You're gonna liberate people from their fear of getting the answer wrong. The next question is from Lil Dookie Stain, once again. He said, for the past few weeks, I'd call my cousin and he'd say stuff like, I'm gonna call you back or I'm in an Xbox party. Before he would sometimes remember to call me back, but for some reason he never does. Should I ask him or not? because it's starting to annoy me now. That is a little bit complicated because I don't know anything about your cousin. You know, is this something that he does outside of that or is this exclusively in that situation? Is he a flaky person in general or, you know, is he generally trustworthy and that's why this is surprising you so much? Because if this is not a common behavior for him, then that could indicate one of a few things. One, you did something that made him mad, okay, and I don't know what that is, obviously. That's something that you and him would have to discuss. You would know that much better than I would. Two, he might be going through some stuff like internally or even, you know, within his household or with his friend group or anything in his life. And he's shutting you and maybe other people out as a result of that. You know, some people, when they're going through things, they tend to isolate themselves and they make promises that they can't keep. Or three, he's just a flaky person in general. Now, like I said, you know your cousin better than I do. Hopefully, I would hope you do. But you have to talk about that with him. You have to communicate with him. You have to say like, yo, what's good? Like, 
what's going on? You keep saying that you're going to, you know, you're going to hit me back up and you never do. Why is that? Is there something going on? Is there some way that I can help you? Did I do something to make you mad? You know, we need to talk about this. Or, you know, if it doesn't bother you that much, then, I mean, don't make that effort. You know, it's it's up to you. It's up to you to determine if that's worth it or not. But, you know, generally speaking, if somebody wants to get back to you, they will. Unless they don't have the time. That's another thing. He might not have the time to get back to you. But at the same time, if he doesn't have the time to do that, he shouldn't tell you that he is. You know, I'm really bad at getting back to people. But I'm very open about that. You know, I'm honest. I keep it real from the jump. I say, yo, my reply times are really bad. So don't expect a quick response from me. And they'll be like, okay, you know, there should be an open line of communication there. And if there's not, then like I said, you either need to talk to him about that or you need to leave that situation alone completely and get on with your life. The next question is from Nate BX. He said, I have a dilemma, but it's kind of weird. I'm a music producer and I used to make beats for some people I don't want to work with anymore. I would like to go my own separate way because I realized I never fully liked the songs we made together. I still don't want to offend them and be friends. How do I tell them this? You just have to be straightforward with them. You know, this isn't about feelings or anything like that. You just have to tell them like, yo, I'm just trying to do my own thing right now. And if they truly support you, if they're worth having in your life, they'll understand that. If they don't understand that, if they try to press you about that, or if they feel some type of way, then maybe they're not as good of friends as you thought they were. You know, this is your career we're talking about. I'm assuming that you want to do production full time. You know, if you want to produce music full time, you have to put yourself first. Really, if you want to be an entrepreneur in general, if you want to work for yourself, you have to learn to put yourself first. That's something that I had to do with YouTube. You know, I had to realize that like, yo, I need to put my YouTube first. Like I need to make this my main priority. And anybody who gets in the way of that, they're going to be moved out of the way. You have to put yourself first, put your career and your personal interests first. And that's not being selfish. That's just practicing good judgment. But like I said, you should communicate this with them. The next question is from Mots. I think that's how you say it. I don't know. He said more of a question, but how do you guys edit your videos and how long does it take? Okay. I can't speak for anyone else, but me personally, I edit my videos with Final Cut Pro on my MacBook. I have a MacBook Pro, the 2019 model. It's a 13 inch MacBook. And on the MacBook, you can get Final Cut Pro. It's like $300, a one-time fee. And I just edit all of my videos on there. You know, and my videos aren't very complex, just a lot of cuts. And it's honestly, editing is one of those things that you just learn over time. You know, you just have to start doing it and you get better as you go along and it becomes easier to you. Now, as far as how long it takes me to edit, it depends on the type of video. Like this video, for example, I might spend like an hour and a half on this. You know, it's not gonna take much time, maybe two hours. But say for example, like a video with a voiceover, like my workout routine video or my hair tutorial video or anything a little more complex like that, it might take me a little more time. And not to mention like my public interviews, if you go far back enough, those videos used to take me like multiple days to edit at a time. So it really depends on the type of content that we're talking about. But generally speaking, I don't really spend more than one day at a time on any given video. The next question is from poetry writer double O. I'm crushing on a girl, but don't really know how to reach out to her. I was going to start a streak with her on Snapchat and see if that could get things started. Any advice? Okay, poetry writer. First of all, this makes me realize just how far behind I am with these questions because me and you talked about this separately like maybe a week or two ago. <laughs> so I'm definitely pretty far behind. But anyways, you know, even though you've resolved this already, I'm going to go ahead and answer this anyways, just to help out other people. But you are my age. I know that you're, you know, like 20, if I'm not mistaken. So you need to be straightforward with her. If you're like older, if you're like out of high school already, you have to be straightforward. When you're trying to like get at somebody, if you're trying to shoot your shot with somebody, you need to be straightforward with them. Don't beat around the bush. Matter of fact, it really doesn't matter how old you are. You should be straightforward. That's my approach. That's always my approach. And the reason why is because if they like you, then that's all you'll need to do. You know, you just need to be straightforward with them and tell them that you like them too. A lot of times, and you know, this doesn't apply to all girls, but some girls out there, they are afraid of rejection. And even if they really, really like you, they will never tell you. They'll never be straightforward with you because they can't handle 
the idea of being rejected. So you need to take it upon yourself to put yourself out there. I would never recommend doing like streaks or anything like that to get a girl's attention. I would recommend just, like I said, being straightforward with her. Like, yo, you know, I think you look good. You know, you seem like a cool person. We should get to know each other. Like, keep it very simple and straightforward. If they like you, they're going to respond well to that. If they don't like you, then they won't. And you can keep it moving, you know, on to the next one. But you won't have that question in your mind of, you know, what if I shot my shot with her? Or, you know, am I doing this wrong? Either she likes you or she doesn't. If she doesn't like you, don't try to convince her to like you. Move on. Just move on. Keep it moving. You know, it is what it is. It may hurt in the moment, but, you know, it is what it is. Now, that's just one less girl that you have to worry about.